Yo guys, welcome to RenderM, my name is Vieco and today we're gonna cover 5 scripts for 3ds Max that I can't live without. I'll add a link for each script in the description of the video if you feel like you want to juice up your Max life. So let's start with my absolute favorite, Max Copy Paste by Crea3D. This script will allow you to copy and paste objects in your scene or between many instances of Max using standard shortcuts like Ctrl C, Ctrl V, Ctrl Shift V or whichever shortcut you define in your hotkey editor. Now let me show you how it works. Let me select a plane here, a box, sphere, and I'm just gonna do a Ctrl C, go to my second instance of Max, press Ctrl Shift V and it's gonna paste in place. Now if I select my cylinder here, press Ctrl C, go to my second Max and if I press Ctrl V, wherever I place, the object is gonna appear there. Not only that, but if I paste on top of an object, it's just gonna start building towers of your pasted objects. Another cool thing is, you can actually use it as a brush tool by just long pressing the Ctrl V button. Now let's copy this teapot here, so Ctrl C, and if I place a bunch of teapots here, cool thing is, all these materials are instances, so if I go to my material editor, click here, and you can see that all of them function as one. If I right click, you have paste from history, and here you can see all the possible combinations of copying, pasting that you did. So for example, if I click here, I'm just gonna click anywhere on the screen and it will repeat what I had last in my last sessions of using Max. I definitely recommend you check out Max Copy Paste because it offers much more functions than what I covered in this video, but if you only need to do copy and pasting, there is a free script by Christopher Grant which does the basic Ctrl C, Ctrl V function. Our second script is gonna be Smart Camera View by D95Design. Now if I go to the button here, here's my smart camera view and I open it up, here you can see the list of all the cameras that are being used in my scene along with all these different options that you can explore here. Now when you right click on each of these cameras, you can see that the cameras are changing. Not only that, you can notice that the aspect ratios are also changing, so each camera can hold an information of a specific aspect ratio and a specific resolution. If we go a little bit lower here, you can see all these buttons here. When you hover your mouse on top of them, you can see a description of what each button does. Let me show you a few. A will select all your cameras in the scene. R will select cameras that share the same property like resolution and aspect ratio. L is gonna lock selected cameras, so if we click on L, our cameras will be stuck in place and there's no chance that you will move these by accident. Now, if we go a little bit lower here, you can see... Okay, let me just switch to this camera real quick. Okay, so if we go lower here, you can see you have a name of that specific camera. You can even rename multiple cameras at once. So this is a really cool thing to keep that consistent naming convention for each camera you have. You have a preset ratios here. You can choose your starting resolutions or an aspect ratio that you need to use or you can define your own render output here. You can even set the same resolutions for multiple cameras. For example, if I wanna change this one and this one, which already have the same resolution, I just wanna change these numbers. I can, for example, put this to 1000, click apply, and both of these cameras are gonna have that change. On top of all of that, you can do batch render with these. There are a bunch of things you can set in your settings, but I'll let you to explore that on your own. Our third script is Drop to Slate, developed by Jaman and Nick. This one is an absolute must-have. Whenever you drop a texture directly from your windows to your Slate material editor, it will always be imported as a standard Max bitmap. But with Drop to Slate, it will be converted to native bitmap of your current rendering engine. If you're using FStorm, it's gonna automatically convert it to FStorm bitmap, or if you're using Corona, it will create a Corona bitmap, etc. Supported rendering engines are FStorm, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, and standard Max rendering engines. On number four, we have Floor Gen Tools, developed by Nick. I think everybody knows about Floor Generator plugin. So if we select our floor here, this is our beautiful future bathroom. So if we select our Floor Generator here, it's gonna create some sort of tiling on the floor, which is all fine and looks cool, but if this is a bathroom, then tiles should be placed all over the walls. So yeah, let's use Floor Gen for that too. And this happens. 
so now when you've seen what floor generator does on multiple planes, we have a solution to that, and that's the floor gen tools. Now, if I click on the button here, this little thing pops out, and what it literally does, it will carefully place floor generator all across these boards, and it will try not to mess up the whole situation. You have some basic info here, but in general, when you just create floor gen, this happens, and each plane here is linked to an actual floor generator. So now you can change the size of your tiles and everything will be automatic. Our last and fifth script is going to be a bundle of scripts called Soulburn Scripts by Neil Blevins. Neil has been developing these scripts for 20 plus years, so he added all the things he missed in Max into these scripts. We're talking 80 plus free scripts that are super useful. Unfortunately, last year due to 3ds Max going rental only, Neil decided to discontinue the development of his scripts. But don't let that discourage you because these are pure gold. Let me quickly show you a few of my favorite scripts here. So I've added a couple of Neil's scripts here on my toolbar. So if I, for example, select all of my objects and I want to attach them into one object, there's an object attacher. One click and everything is attached. On the other hand, if I want to detach everything, there's a script object detacher. One click and everything is also detached. If, for example, I have this box and the pivot of this box is incorrectly placed, so usually my procedure would be you go here to this tab, affect pivot only, center to object, and that is that. But now, but now you have a script called pivot place center. So click on that and the pivot will always be placed in the center. Another useful script is image plane maker. So when you click on image plane maker, this is good if you need to import images from your drive into Max and you want to use them as a reference or something else. So I want to get this script to appear in my front view. I can also select top view or side view. So let's click on the front view and let me take this nice looking chair. So double click there, click on do and the chair is in my max as a plane. All Neil scripts can be accessed via a Soulburn scripts lister. So when you click on the Soulburn scripts lister, you have this drop down menu and all of his scripts are placed here and they're easily accessible. That will be it for today guys, let me know what is your favorite script for 3ds Max in the comment section, let's share knowledge, have good renderings and let's have no Max crashes. See you in the next video, bye!